So I like to use 75,000 uh, and, and I've gotten away with 75,000 for quite a long time. I've really never had a problem with it. So I use 75,000, and in this case, I'm using an infantry march. 75,000 is devoted to T2. I put four units into range and cavalry, and then I put 10 units of ballista, or T1 ballista, in the march. Now, you don't necessarily need to do that, but the benefit of doing that is that if, let's say, your whole march goes down, not always, but sometimes that'll save your leader. Not always. Usually, if it's if it's really close, it might save your leader. Now, primarily, the benefit of doing it this way is this is you know this is the traditional T4 solo march that works really really well. If I happen to have some luminary like luminary guards or T5 units, for example, I don't have very many of them as you can see. But if I did then there's a very good chance that what I'm going to do is I'll take this down to about 150,000 and then I'll devote the remainder to T5. Okay. Because most of the guys that I've seen that run these don't do much more than 120,000 T5. I've seen some guys go up as high as 200,000 T5 and then put the rest as T4. I've seen even some people not even use T2 buffer in their, in their T5 marches and they just use T4 for buffer. Uh, but primarily speaking, if you do use T5, I think your best bet is probably to use anywhere between 120 to 150,000 units. Uh, you know, and that's really kind of a personal decision because it does cost Lunite, and Lunite is kind of expensive, seeing as how when the pack is not around, you might have a full infirm, and therefore you're going to get screwed. Uh, so I don't really bother putting T5 in my March. Uh, saves whenever I'm sending in fringe cab, even in rallies, um, unless I just happen to want to, and then I adjust accordingly. Uh, and might even send a full T5 if I really feel like doing it for a rally, if I'm trying to go for maximum damage. Uh, but the main thing is, this is the concept behind the buffer, and this can be replicated in terms of range, and then same thing going for cavalry. It's just to prevent you from losing troops, on your tier 4 units or your tier 5 okay the idea is to try and cut the losses of that as much as possible you might ask me like why did you put four units in there well the reason why you do this is due to the army lineup so should you use when you're rallying uh, you know occasionally people ask me this question and, and in the case of range Kind of an interesting thing. Ryan figured this one out. Uh, but basically, it comes down to this. You know, if you're sitting in Imp Phalanx and you've got your range in the back, it takes them a few minutes to walk up. So what you do instead of using an Infantry Phalanx, because again, you've got four units, right? One, two, three, four. Then you got four units here. These are both buffers, right? So your army's going to go over. It's going to attack that unit. It's going to attack this unit. And then it's going to attack your range, right? It takes a few seconds. So it turns out that if you put range over here on the sides, it's going to hit this, and then it'll hit this, and then it'll hit this. But it gives your range a little bit more time to do more damage because they're in the middle, and therefore you've got a little bit more leeway as far as doing damage here. It's a tiny thing, but you probably want to use an inf wedge if you're going to attack in range, uh, and that goes for rallies primarily. I almost always put cav in the back, so that way the range get hit, the infantry get it, then the cav. So I don't really bother using wedges too often for cavalry, because like in a cav wedge doesn't make a lot of sense. Using a range wedge, again the cav being on the side, like you know when we were talking about range being on the sides, it makes sense because the cav will probably walk out in front and save your you know your range from getting hit as much. But in and and again you know. In the case of a range wedge, you would think that that would apply here, but most of the time the cab is just going to get in the middle of it anyway. And so you're oftentimes, if if you're trying to save time on damage, range phalanx is usually the one that I personally go with. Now, in the case of like, say, if I'm sending infantry, I mean, again, kind of the same premise. You know, I, I put infantry in the back, and then have the range line and the cab line get hit. 
Now, to kind of give you an idea of like why I use the buffer that I do, okay? I currently use 375,000 troops. Whenever I send a, send a single solo, I never send 250k. We'll never send 250k. So if you want to know a 250,000 buffer, usually the name of the game is you want to try and eliminate, you know, if you're joining rallies, for example, which is for, pertaining to this video, if you do not know, and let's say this guy is 300 million might, 200 million might, 150 million might, and you're really scared of him for some reason, you use what is known as a T2, T4 march. Now, that 60% of that is going to be tier 4 units. The 40% of that is going to be T2 units. Okay? So, generally speaking, if let's say I sent 100,000 units, I'm going to send 60,000 T4 and 40,000 T2. If you're doing, you know, anything larger than that, just remember 60% is going to go to T4, 40% is going to go to T2. If you scout them and you can see their troop type, that's great. But if, let's say you don't know what that is, and you can't tell initially what front line they're in, an easy way to find out is to create a test march. So you can take, say, a thousand units of any one type of T2. I mean, really the idea is just to do enough damage to the wall, basically. So like, I'll use 200,000 T1 Ballista, 10,000 T3 Ballista and 37,000 T4 Ballista Destroyers. And, you know, the idea is you need enough Siege to knock that wall down. You know, for the heftier walls, I've usually used this, and this usually will crack down a wall that's even, you know, around a mill. And most people don't have a very large wall. For the few that do, that's when you start having to use some Destroyers and using T3 traps. But... The idea in the test is the very first march you're going to send, you're going to knock down that wall. And then for every test after that, really all that matters at this point is basically you don't want any of these familiars added on. Right? You, you could do this purely without familiars. And really, you could almost customize this every time you send a march. But the first march, almost always, you want to send a march to knock that wall down. And you will record the amount of might that he has on a notepad or anything that you can write some piece of paper on, anything like that. Take the amount of might he has initially and then just attack him with an inf march after you've sent the test march so you know his walls down and see, you know, what's the difference. Does might drop a little bit, it drop, you know, a considerable amount, and then, you know, send cab. And if that decreases, what's that decrease look like? from the initial, you know, and again, you're going to take that initial might every time. So if you set infantry, you look at the difference and you keep track of that difference, but then you got to take that might now and subtract that from the amount of, you know, from the might difference of the calf hit. And then you got to take that initial hit from the calf hit and compare that to the range hit. And once you've done that, you've got three stats. You know, you've got three differences and the one that's the largest is assumably the one that's countering it. And the main thing that you have to remember with counters, okay, is that infantry beats range, range beats cavalry, cavalry beats infantry. So if range is higher, what does that mean? Well, chances are he's probably in calf phalanx. You know, if I notice that infantry difference is higher, then chances are he's in range phalanx. If I send cavalry, then odds are he's probably in infantry phalanx. Okay, when I'm trying to pick out the differences and trying to determine which one it is best. That's how you determine the front line anyway. If you're gonna fill, you know, four slots for one unit type, which is infantry, and get those squad attack bonuses, that makes plenty of sense. And then have that fifth slot be an army hero. That's fine. Until you can get somebody like uh, you know, Twilight Priestess, and then you can throw her in there when she's maxed out. And that's super ideal. The most ideal situation that you can get with Calvary. Okay, as far as the heroes are concerned. And so when we're getting tentacle, it's that 5% increase and that one hero and then the 50% HP that is why people pick the two abnormal little heroes that you don't use that much in army heroes, okay? But this is what you want to use whenever you're sending like a full march of range or, you know, again, you know, going back to all the different heroes that I've shown you so far. Now you'll notice that like here, uh, in the case of range, 
I do use a, uh, I, I've been using Deadly Slash for a 40% drop into cav damage. And I think that's a pretty smart thing to do. You know, if you know you're going to be hitting cav, dropping the HP of your enemy's cav units by 40% is pretty powerful. You know, of course, Blackwing is going to be a 600% increase into range, just like how Gargantua is, uh, or even Bon Appetit for infantry. Okay. The, those are always going to be picks that everybody grabs because it's a 600% boost. And pretty soon you're going to find that almost everybody will then grab, for range, they'll grab Stinging Swarm in the same way they grab Frostwing for Cav. Okay. And then again, going right back into, you know, if, if they've got Huey Hops, then they use that for the infantry. Uh, so again, I'm just trying to emphasize, you know, the, the parallels here. Okay. But then, you know, as far as like shielding goes, Okay, now, when it comes to shielding your troops, you know, I, I can see people using Pyrus, because that's a 60% increase to your squad damage. It's a pretty underrated value there, but I think Pyrus is a really good choice. Again, Gem and Gremlin for infantry, Trickstar for range. You know, and then if you want to use Griffin, I think Griffin's a good choice. Um, as far as the shields are concerned, which I believe the shields are both Snow Beast, Saber Fang, and Hoarder, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, infantry, cavalry, and range, respectively. Uh, it's, you know, for me, I, I personally, if I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick the ones that do damage. I'm not gonna bother trying to increase the HP. So I'm more likely to pick like a Pyrus or a Mega Maggot than I am a Strix, or even a, you know, something like Evil Weevil. Because for me, I, it makes more sense to me to debuff the enemy as it does to increase the HP of my own troops because I'm not trying to keep them alive longer, I'm trying to kill as fast as I can. I'm trying to kill as many troops as I can. And it's been shown that a lot of the times, the higher the attack stat is, the more damage you do, and that's kind of the idea. We're trying to kill as much as we can for every unit we have. Uh, but ultimately, that is what you would want to use for familiars. And so, in an ideal world, what you want for your jewels, for your gear, you want to have a Cavalry Max HP Saber Jewel. You want to get this to Legendary if you can. You want that jewel. Every piece of gear, almost every single piece, you're going to want a Legendary Cav Attack Jewel in your Cav set. Okay, and then the third piece out of those jewels is almost always going to be a Gargantuan jewel, which is going to give you 10% into attack. Some people will go and use champion jewels uh, for the 15% HP, but most of the time I save my champ jewels for the travel speed inside the speed gear, so I don't really usually bother with it, but it is army HP, so some people do, you know, usually try that. Now, something else that should be mentioned is that if you do do the... Uh, uh, Baron, and this is the main reason why you ever do Baron, okay, and this is why I recommend that if you can get into a large guild, get into a guy that's got 11k hero maxed up, all that stuff, and then send your troops and reinforce these kind of guys that are doing these kind of rallies, right, is that you're going to get these Royal Cavalry Jewels, Royal Infantry Jewels, or Ranged Jewels, and what you can do then is these jewels here, okay, will give you 10% into attack and 10% into HP, as opposed to to the Gargantuan Duel, which is giving 10% into attack at 10% into defense. And so, in short, you want the Saber Jewel, you want the Attack Jewel, and the Gargantua Jewel for most players. And then when you can, you know, the most logical step from there onward, in my opinion, is you would probably replace a Saber Jewel with a Royal Cavalry Jewel, once you've gotten that out. The only reason why I say that as opposed to getting rid of a Gargantua Jewel, is the Gargantua Jewel is still giving us 10% the Cavalry Attack, which is still a more, you know, you, if you're gonna, if I'm gonna pick one and I'm gonna choose which one I'm gonna get, that's the one I'm gonna get. I'm not gonna get rid of my Attack Jewels. Uh, the Attack Jewels are really the way you wanna go in terms of your gear, because that is what boosts it up. Range Jewels, which ones do you use? To answer that question, uh, just like before, what you want to use is you want to use your ranged attack jewels, okay? You want to get them the legendary if you can. Uh, again, some people 
you know, you'll hear about people in the very beginning that use blue jewels, and I recommend not doing that. Wait until you can get them to Epic. You can save yourself, because the problem is, is if you want to pull them out, the higher the tier they are, the more expensive it is to pull them out. And it's just easier not to put them in right away, in my opinion. Uh, but going on from there, uh, of course, what about defense jewels? Primarily speaking, if, if you can, avoid them and don't have them in your gear sets. Uh, in the case of a range jewel, all right, you're gonna be using worm jewels. So you're gonna have the worm jewel in there and that slot for all of your range gear pieces. And then of course, what is the jewel here? It's the grim jewel, which is, gives 15% to range HP. And then again, just like I was discussing earlier with the cap jewels, if you can get royal range jewels from Baron, then get them because that's gonna be better and you can replace your 15% HP jewel, AKA your Grim jewels, with those Royal jewels in your set to continue upgrading. In the case of infantry jewels, okay, again, same premise as before, you just want your infantry attack jewels and you preferably wanna get them to legendary. And then what you wanna do is you then wanna get the, uh, uh, do, 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 the Trojan Jewels, okay, and the Trojan Jewels are a good piece for 15% HP. And then, you know, again, you know, down the road, you'll also want to have a grab known, something known as the Terror Jewel, and that's 10% and 10%. And so in conclusion, all right, if you're wondering, okay, now how do I get Grim Jewels? How do I get Trojan Jewels? How do I get Saber Jewels? These are all going to be acquired from chests. Uh, so most of the time you can get these from monsters so you can hit monsters and especially level fours and fives You can potentially get yourself a couple of drops But most of the time these are going to be opened up from pay to win chests that you can buy from packs in the store um, Again link in the description if you want to learn how to save some money with Huawei But uh, the main thing is is that you're ultimately going to try and you're going to get these pieces and so in short, when you're actually getting your cap set completed, or your range set, or your infantry set, you want to have those jewels all slotted in. You'll notice that, like here, I have a defense jewel. Don't need it. Do I need a range jewel in there? No, don't need it. Do I need that range jewel in there? No, don't need it. Why do I have them in there? It's because I use them as a mix piece. But generally speaking, to be more effective, you want to increase cavalry attack, cavalry HP, and then cavalry defense. And in that order, what's more important is going to be your army HP. Your cavalry attack is the most important stat that you need. And then, of course, what about the sigils? Okay, if we're getting technical, wolf pack sigils are going to increase the rally attack. But these are technically not the best ones. In fact, the best particular sigil, which you need, is actually a pay to win pack that you can get and if we're getting super technical about it you will find that there is in fact a pact out there that comes out from time to time where you can essentially buy these sigils it's expensive to get these sigils mind you but if you do that you're going to increase the total amount of damage you can do and if everyone in your guild has them it increases the amount of stat to inf range and cap depending on the type of sigil you have all right so if we're going to talk about gear all right, gear in itself, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start off with what I call travel speed gear, okay? So travel speed gear, this particular set I'm wearing right now is, it's set up for gathering. Uh, so if you're gonna like solo attack a player and you know they have a lot of resources, what you wanna do is you wanna send like 200, like send T2 basically, never send T4, do not ever send your leader. And this concept is to increase the army capacity and send it as quick as possible. That's what this set's for. But really, if we're going to get technical about it, you want to use Herder Pauldrons. Uh, instead of using the Nosferus Mask, you want to use Beastel. And then instead of the Seafaric Cleats, then you want to use Untamed Boots. Okay. And then basically, if you can, try to get... Uh, you want to get something known as champion jewels and you want to throw champion jewels in there because it'll give you like a 20 percent boost otherwise your alternative is you know like yeah as you can see i use nostrils jewels in my gather set because obviously you want to increase that army capacity so you can pull more resources from your targets but if not and let's say you're using this for rallying then uh, instead of using like a nostrils jewel there you just want to use jewels that increase travel speed that's really all you need to do 
So if you've got extra Saber Jewels, extra Trojan Jewels, extra uh, Grim Jewels, then that's ultimately uh, what you end up doing is you're trying to increase that travel speed. So in every travel speed zone, you'll see that I use Ivory Chokers. Uh, you know, the actual Griffin's Talon itself, the only reason this is in there is just because, you know, it's, it's like a placeholder. Uh, you could technically put really anything in that slot, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, but pretty much this is what you will end up using a lot of the time whenever you're trying to use like a speed march. Obviously getting them to Mythic increases that travel speed even more, and then having the jewels in there will increase it even more, and so forth. Uh, you know, as far as travel speed is concerned. Now, if I'm gonna go and say I've got, I'll give you like three examples of, you know, one for infantry, one for range, one for cab. Now, these sets are like a little bit customized, so I'm, disclaimer, you need to be careful and you gotta listen, because if you don't listen and you watch, you're not gonna understand. <laughs> okay, so to start off with, all right, the infantry sets that I currently use, okay? Some people do ask me, like, why is it that I have a pair of mints in there? It's because I have, I want the HP. Is it technically the best in slot piece? No. Okay, it, like, if I was gonna get technical about infantry, and we're getting super technical about it, instead of using that offhand, what you really probably ought to do is actually go through and use inside the, uh, not the Terrathorn set, but it is the, uh, let me see if I can find the set. Good lord, good lord. You want to use the Kraken's Anchor, because it adds 35% into infantry. Uh, the primary reason is the more damage you have, the better. Uh, you can, on the other hand, use, like, the Call of the Deep. I've seen people use it, but, um, you know, Call of the Deep is okay for the offhand. You can get 21%, so ignore what I said about the Kraken's Anchor, but, <laughs> again, you know, just ignore what I said there. I read that as offhand. My brain just dirt but anyway the thing is is that you know the call of the deep will add 21 percent into infantry attack and then 14 percent into hp which again you know it, it is a bit of a trade-off okay because you know where if let's say you use the winter mitts from the snow beast set you'll notice that you're getting 45 percent into defense and then 35 percent in hp so you're losing a certain amount of damage uh, if you go with the mitts, but you're gonna get more defense and more HP. I've always ended up siding with the winter mitts, but if I had to get technical about it, I would probably use the Call of the Deep, uh, just because it's probably better in that offhand slot. Now, you know, again, with offhand, uh, you know, it's, you'll look, you, of course, this, this video may not hold up the test of time. Uh, and I say that because, you know, over time, I imagine that this might even change, you know, and so you always want to be checking, you know, in general in your sets, you always want to be increasing attack and primary and then compare that with HP, because those are the two stats that really in any blast set, the, they're really the only thing that matters, because when you're attacking, you want to kill the troops as fast as possible, you want your troops to live longer, but not, you know, obviously... It, well, it make, if it makes any sense to you, okay, just basically think it like this. Your troops have to kill a lot, that's attack, and they need to live long, that's HP. And then defense is kind of this stat that essentially ad, like cuts the enemy attack. So, like, it's not that it's not necessary, but it's not as important. Like, we can get by having a lower version of that between those two that I mentioned earlier in the beginning, okay? So, you know, as far as the infantry set is concerned, uh, the main thing with the infantry set is that you're going to have a Terror Lash from the Terror Thorn set. You're going to have a Terror Shield, preferably at Mythic. Uh, you know, if you can get the Storm Tacits and max those out, that's ideal. You're going to get HP. Now, if I really had to be a chooser, I would have all Ambrosial Cups, but a lot of people, when you're starting out rallying, you're probably not going to get all Ambrosial Cups because it's pretty hard to do. Uh, so you'll go with a full set of Mythic Terror Vials, for example, and that's fine. Because you're getting, you know, Imp HP and Imp Attack, and there's, again, going off of the rule, don't use Defense Jewels. You know, ignore the jewels that I have in here. I, I really, really stress that because I know some people will judge me for it. Okay, but the main thing is you don't want, like, you don't want mixed jewels. You don't want, like, range, cav, Imp. 
a lot of mixed set players will do this, but generally it's not useful in your one type sets or any of your blast sets. You don't want that because that's not helping you. If you're going to send infantry, you want to increase just infantry. You don't want to increase everything else. There's no point. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, for the range set, uh, the main thing here is that your range set, you're going to primarily use blight rings in the beginning, but towards the latter end of it, I recommend using ambrosial cups. Um, so if you had all ambrosial cups, that's like really ideal. Um, again, you know, if you've got the internal codex, that's more range damage. So that's ideal. The skull crusher is by far the best piece in that slot because you're going to get 28%. Now, you know, some people do use like the worm rat. I've seen people do it. You know, and again, this is 35% and then 24, and that's okay. I don't necessarily hate that. I've also seen people do like the decadent sword, and I've seen them do like an inversion of that. The reason why I support the skull crusher is you're getting 21% into range, which, okay, that's 10% less. How is that better? Well, you're getting 28% army attack, and that's why, because really, that's 8 plus 1, that's 9, 2 and 2 is 4, so that's really 49% into range attack that you're getting with the Skull Crusher. Okay, so really, in retrospect, that's actually a lot more beneficial than the Worm Rod is by a long shot, okay? Even though there isn't really any HP there, as far as the amount of damage you're getting, you're getting an enormous chunk of damage from that Skull Crusher, and so, for that reason, I use that. Now, the next headpiece you use the Wormborn Cornet. Uh, for the chest piece, you want to use the Hardened Carapace. And then for the boots, you want to use the Dragon's Talon. Now, that's, you know, if assuming you can get all the jewels right and you got everything mixed up, you know, like I have, then you're screwed. Don't do that. Uh, you know, once you get these things legendary, keep defense jewels out, put your, you know, your, you know, the uh, worm jewels, your grim jewels, and your range attack jewels, you know, and your range set, so you don't do what I did. Now, in your cav set, you know, instead of using beast home, I recommend using bumble helm, because you're going to get more cav damage, and cave, you're going to get army HP. That's better than a beast helm, so don't ever do that. Otherwise, this right here is perfect. Or a cab blast uh, because this is pretty much as much cab damage as we can do. Now that's assuming, of course, we're not we're not going to be inclusive of champion or 11k heroes in this video. So the people that ask me, well, well technically the, there's technically one. Okay, yeah, sure there is, but we're not we're not going to pretend. We're going to assume the cab and champ are not. Uh, how do you say we're going to ignore 11k heroes and we're going to ignore champ pieces okay <laughs> we're going to ignore those for now now yes they're technically there and yes if you got really super technical about it yes there are technically better pieces than most pieces but this is about as good as we can possibly get it okay so in short okay that is pretty much what you want to use for gear okay if you're going to be rally leading at least at a relatively okay budget now and that's you know and that's even at like may maybe late game so it's kind of it's it's not cheap let me put it that way okay and really for the amount of money if you get invested that far into it and you have all the stuff at mythic it almost gets to the point where it would make more sense to have champ pieces so like if you want a champ equivalent i'll show you just to give you an idea of what that would look like but like the champ equivalent of like for example i'll start with inf then range then cap Okay, but if you follow my line of thought, you'll you'll understand why. Okay, so like here you see it's 28, nothing in there, a little bit into army. Okay, so out of those, these three pieces, what's increasing infantry attack the most? You know, out of a champ piece, the champ blade is the only one that's giving infantry attack. And out of those pieces, this is giving me 21 and then 28. So I'm getting, out of, a, out of its entirety, I'm getting about 49% when it's all said and done, into that champ blade. Okay, now if I compare that 49% to the best piece that we know of for, you know, relatively okay players, you get 38% out of a Terror Lash. Alright, so in super technicality there, the champ blade is technically better. You're getting 49%. Okay, so you would grab a champ blade. Alright, now what about your offhand? Well, offhand is pretty quick, easy, that's the champ plan. Okay, because you're getting 42% into this infantry attack. But wait, there's the champion light. It's at 49%. Isn't that better? And it's like, well, yes, it is. But it all depends. Because you can see this is 42 and 49. This is 49 and 42. The reason why they have these there like they do 
is because it's kind of dependent if you're going like imp range and cav range or range cav, imp cav, vice versa. But for the most part, if you're going to pick an offhand, I would probably use the champ plate uh, for the offhand and an infantry blast. Um, so ignore what I said about the champ lab. I just I like the champ lab because it used to be the OG. But anyway, uh, now as far as the helmets are concerned, okay, um, you know this is a kind of a easy peasy kind of thing to see, but you'll see that you know the only real piece here that has any infantry bonuses is going to be the champion visor, which is only thirty five percent, twenty eight percent, and then fourteen. So really, you're technically getting thirty nine percent. And that's a mythic, okay? This is assuming the stuff is all the way maxed up. I'm not gonna bother comparing legendary and other words, you know, and different like variations. I mean, if you want to do that, you can do it yourself or <laughs> look it up. But uh, if we're just talking about it like late game, all the way maxed out, all that jazz, then this is basically what it is. Which you know, it's almost always about 49% is the breaking point you know and again if we if we're talking helmets if you might recall i told you that the beast helm was a really good choice which is at 42 percent and you can see why that champ piece is still this is why the champ see you know this actual set itself is is treasured above all but if you look at like a legendary equivalent of it okay a legendary equivalent's only got 25 and it's only got 10 so it's only doing 35 okay so it's important to point out that yes, a legendary version of this is not necessarily as good because if I have a legendary mythic version of the Beast Helm as opposed to a legendary version of the Champion Visor, it actually makes more sense to have the mythic version of the Beast Helm. So you can be kind of, uh, how do you say, like, you're competitive against legendary champ players. <laughs> okay, but if you are in all mythic, that is, and it's still expensive to begin with. Um, so even if you do mythic your pieces out, that's just something to consider. Uh, because if they have mythic champ, then you're, you're screwed because they're the best pieces in the game. Uh, now, you know, obviously in infantry, you know, there's the champ mail, which gives you 42%. 42% in the cab and then 56% in champ plate. So easy, champ mail, you know, no brainer. Uh, if we're talking the strides, it's 56%. I've seen a lot of people that what they'll do is they'll just, you know, they'll they'll pick out one champ piece that they want and they'll add it to their set. I recommend that for people. So a lot of these 56% bonus stats that if you can get them to mythic are pretty overpowered. The boots are pretty big in terms of stat gain. They're a huge chunk. Um, but, you know, obviously you get the strides for the leggings. And then if you're talking accessories, 21% into the faith is pretty much what you would expect. You can see that there's also 21% in the blessings. And that is really dependent on like, you know, are you going to be sending imp and range or are you going to be sending imp and gav? A lot of people use imp and gav, so they just go with the champ faiths. Uh, but again, you know, there is just like that slight little variation that kind of makes the just like the difference between an imp range, cav range, and so on set. Um, but that's for an imp set. Now, obviously, you know, if we do the same thing, we do it for range, you know, again, you know, you're looking at, okay, well, this is cab, that's 49%, this is 28, that's 28. Which one's better between the two of these? You know, again, reminding yourself that this is 49% and that's 49%. So really, it just it becomes a question of like, well, do you want infantry or do you want cat? Like that's really all it comes down to. And then when we're talking lamps, again, thinking about you know range, it's like, well, okay, so I can do 42 here or I can do 49, you know, over here, which makes the chap lamp better for range. You know, and if you're looking at the helm. And there's 49 into cav, there's 35 into range here, and there's 35 into here. That becomes a choice of, well, do you go in for cav? You start to see a pattern, don't you? Okay, and that's kind of the whole point of it. Um, and that's kind of the reason why they do what they do with champ sets. Um, but again, that, that that pattern that I'm telling you about, that that's like pretty much the rest of the sets. If you're going to pick them for range or purely for cav or purely for him, I'm sure you'll figure that out without really me having to tell you that. So save you guys a little bit of time. That is basically what you want to do for gear. Now, regardless of what I've set up to this point, you now know how to set up a test phalanx. You know how to check the guy's comp. You know how to see whether or not, you know, if he's got like, if he's scouted, right? You scout somebody and you know, then the easy thing to do is just send a single march of test 
And if he, let's say I scout this guy and I just happen to know that he doesn't have anti scout on, the easy thing to do is just send a 200k like ballista march and then send like you know a mixed march of like 50k and just hit him and just see what what comes up in the report after I scout him because the first thing I see before and after the report I can compare and then that'll tell me what front line he's in okay because that's that that's what makes scouted targets really easy it's the anti scouted targets that they're a real pain because you don't know and so when you do start a rally and you're gonna start that rally you've done your heroes you've got your gear what do I do so once you've tested his phalanx, you know what his front line supposedly is. You're gonna probably you can you can do this one of two ways. You can you know if he's like 300 million, you can usually solo one or two rallies on him and not have a problem. If he's five, six, seven, or 800 mil, that is where we usually like to go in advance. We'll port over here at a distance, not to try and scare him off. Okay. And then we will have maybe three guilds or four guilds or even five guilds at a single time be in a discord call, a line call or some kind of communication device where all the leaders of every guild that's joining this rally are all in sync and they're all in ready to go. And it's known as a rally party. And what you do is what you need to know in advance is what your travel speed gear timer is. If you don't know what I'm referring to, I'm talking about if you hit rally attack and I send a cav march, I need to know this timer in advance. Because that walk timer right there, that's going to tell me how long my march needs to be. So all five rally leads need to have that timer exactly the same. And when they launch, it all needs to be exactly at the same time. That way that march is within maybe at best a second or two off at best and if, if you can cut it down to less than five that's ideal you don't want to give this person a lot of time because again in rally trapping what do they do pop heal pop heal counter heal pop you know they're just trying to counter okay so the more seconds of time you give them the worse it's gonna get okay and then again you and this is assuming this guy is not online right if we know the guy's online he's 300 mil then I can tell you any rally you're going to send, it's going to probably not work. Okay, so most of the time on light targets, if you do approach them, don't try to solo rally them. It sucks. Do not do it. I avoid it like cancer. It is not the thing you want to do. Okay, if anything, if you're going to hit somebody that's online that's 300 mil, do a double rally. I would save you will save yourself a lot of trouble from doing that because single rallies won't do a whole lot, especially if the composition's solid, even at 200 mil. It, you know, there are people that have 200 mil or even 150 mil I've heard of, of people that have rally trap comps that you frankly are wasting your time trying to send a single rally at them, okay? You have to go into that with, if they're online, then tread carefully. Probably need to use a rally party for that. Now, if, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, okay, one of the things you want to make sure you do get, you want to get a prism boost, so make sure you get a level 60 leader. Uh, if you can, kill a leader with you know, if you've already killed some leaders, get that altar boost. It's a very tread carefully, but make sure you have it. You know, get that boost. The next thing you want to make sure you do is, you know, once you join the rally, make sure, obviously make sure you ping your members. If you've got like a line group, a discord group, or some form of communication, let everyone know what is going to happen in advance. And the main thing is, is you do not want your other guildmates scouting that target. You do not want your other guildmates you know, sending solos or any of that crap, okay? Because that's going to be aggravating. It'll wake them up. It'll do a lot of things that you don't want it to do. <laughs> so don't do that, okay? Uh, the main thing is, is that like, you know, in MP Money, what we do is a lot of the time, if I do a rally attack, I'm going to tell people if it's a T2 or T4 march, and they're going to know in advance if it's 60-40, right? And so if it's a 60-40 march, and let's say we have enough people, right, we will send 100,000 each. So every person will send 100,000, but when they reinforce somebody in the rally, right? So the rally lead, which is presumably you because you're watching this video, but let's assume that you're uh, joining the rally for a moment. Do you just send cavalry? The answer to that question is no. Okay, if, if he wants cavalry, you don't just send freaking cavalry. Okay, here's why. If I see that, your march is faster, <laughs> okay? If I put, like, an infantry in it, which is the slowest one, now he can't tell if it's an infantry or a range march. He can't tell. He doesn't know it. He could just guess for all he knows. 
Okay, just adding one unit. That's all you need to do. Okay. So for those of you who are out there that keep reinforcing your alleys without putting one freaking infantry unit, I'm talking to you, don't do that. <laughs> okay? But again, I bring that up because you know if it's if it's a 60-40 march, then obviously this is gonna be a little different. Um, it's gonna be a little different depending on, you know, obviously if you're sending 60-40, then you're gonna be sending, you know, and in this case, you know, if I was sending 375,000, it'd be 225,000 total. And then the rest are all going to be T2 cab, right? But you know, again, that depends if it if it's a range march, an inf march, vice versa. Okay. Now, you know, if I was sending just a hundred thousand, it's simple. It's just 60k and then 40k T2. Okay. But the main thing here I'm bringing up here is, you know, that's applying to reinforcements. Okay. And this applies to range marches. This applies to inf marches, and obviously doesn't apply to inf marches because inf marches are the slowest march of all. Now, with everything that I've told you so far, okay, the other thing that you want to do is, let's say you know this guy's online. Within the last 10 seconds, you want everyone in your guild, presumably to tell them within advance, okay, make sure that you message them in the guild. Make sure that everybody is sending either siege or T1 units or just scrap units and have them spam one units. The idea is that if the guy is sitting there and he's prepared to eat that rally and he's online, what that does is it sends a bunch of marches and he can't see the march coming. And it, 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 essentially, if you do this, like, you know, okay, if you like you were right beside him, which you can do this, you know, you can be far away and send a rally and that's a rally party because you're trying to hit, you know, hit at the same time. Most of the time, if you're just doing a single rally and you're just soloing this guy, and let's say he's less than 150 mil or 200 mil or 300 mil, and you assume he's not that big, then, you know, assuming you're not sending a T2, T4, what you do is you wear your speed gear, okay? And then what you're going to try and do is you're going to have everybody join the rally, send in those reinforcements with one freaking infantry. If you're sending a cav march or, an, or a range march. And then, you know, you've got your prison boost, you've got your prisoner, right? And then you've also got your altar boost. You want to make sure you've got anti-scout on. And then it's up to you, but obviously everybody guaranteed has to have a 50% army boost. And what you do is you get your rally filled up, make sure that you, you know, go into your guild chat, let them know, look, this is what reinforcements I need. I'm sending the lead, whatever kind of, you know, whatever you need to do to communicate what it is that you need. You got to make sure you tell them that in advance. And then once you've done that, then all that is required from you at that point forward is basically just make sure that once you've actually got the rally going and you're 20 seconds out, you got to let everybody know to spam and then let that rally launch. And when it launches, you swap to whatever gear. In this case, I was saying cavalry, so I would swap to cav gear. And then you get that speed march from the second the march starts. And then if you swap to calf and it lands, you get your calf bonuses. Okay. And that's that's the ideal. And then obviously you want to make sure that you, you know, if you're in the right phalanx and wedge for that march. Okay. And going back in the beginning of the video, feel free to go back and watch this so that you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. But uh, pretty much in, in short, that is pretty much what you need to do for rally leading and and hopefully this is not too confusing towards the end of this video, but if you understand everything I've told you up to this point, all right, there are a couple of things that you can do uh, in terms of like actually spiking players. So like, for example, let's say I don't necessarily know this guy. Let's say he's a trap or maybe I don't know for sure. You always want to check and your guild, you want somebody to view his profile constantly. Because you're checking to see, you know, in the last, say, 20 seconds, if you know this guy could potentially swap, you could have somebody at the last 10 seconds hit spamming view profile. If you see his his gear change, you can have somebody in your guild chat or, you know, basically yourself, if you were the one, you know, supporting a rally, type in C, for example, and then that rally lead can hit, so he could hover over the cancel button on a rally so you can actually open up the button for the actual cancel and you can hit like the cancel and then have your button or your mouse or your key you know your <laughs> your phone basically and you can hover over cancel and if you see the word c you can hit cancel and then you can avoid 
like a trap from hitting you, you can avoid losing troops that way. Okay, it's something I recommend if you're trying to avoid getting hurt, um, especially if you're sending your lead. Now, a lot of the time, you know, again, like I said, my, my best approach for anybody that's above 200 mil is usually using a T2, T4 blast, assuming that I know the guy is potentially online. If he's offline and I happen to know that we can fill the rally, obviously, you know, the, the extra bonus points for those of you that have been watching up to this point, obviously you guys have probably heard of this already, and if you haven't, I'm going to go ahead and show it to you. But you can get Rascally Rabbit from Huey Hops, which if you unlock his ability, it gives your leader free, which means that you can send your leader, send a full march, and you get your leader back. The other one that's really powerful is Blackwing, which gives you Hellfire, which Hellfire, when it's fully upgraded, will kill 100% of your enemy's wounded troops. So if you send a rally and he's like a rain trap, so he gets like a million T4 infantry reinforcements and you're sending a cab rally, guess what? A million of those garrisoned infantry that he has in his front line, he thinks, ha, no big deal, my guild will soak it, no big deal. Well, all of a sudden, 100% of them are all going to the grave. <laughs> so that's that's what I use Hellfire for. I don't use Hellfire that often though. In comparison, I will use Rascally Rabbit and Huey Hops. If I'm gonna pick which one's more useful, I will tell you that Huey Hops is a lot better in a long shot. Now, you know, in terms of like, uh, and then this is pertaining up to this point, I've talked to really just how you can hit rally targets. Fort battling and base battling is a little different. And I will say that to be a good base defender or even a really good base attacker, the main thing that you want to determine is what phalanx they could potentially be in. So if they're like, you know, mixed, okay, then pick whichever one you want to use, range, cav, or inf. But most of the time you can make that, that, like, that assumption based on the heroes they have. Like if they have a majority imp or a majority range, or maybe they're weaker in the number of heroes, just pick whichever their weakest imp. Like if they, if, mo if a majority of their heroes are imp, then send cab. If a majority of their heroes are ranged, then send imp and vice versa. You know, and so then you're gonna get a benef bonus because of the squad attack. Remember, you only need four heroes for squad bonuses to matter. So. You know, in, in any form, form of, like, fort defense, a lot of the time I've seen people that will... Uh, usually they pick, like, four heroes, and they split them into two. So they'll pick two types, two heroes for each, and then this one hero will either be one or the other. You know, so they'll have three in one or the other, or they might even do one for the the one stat that they don't have. Like, and, like for example, if I was Imp and Cab, I'd have two heroes for Imp, two heroes for Cab, and then one hero for Rage. And the worst case, I defended range, but I really don't want to if I don't have to. <laughs> okay. And most of the time, if you do get to those kind of situations, it's better to just back out and not take the rally. And if you don't have to, don't. Uh, the main thing with blasts is that if you're like in mix, right? The main thing is, is it, it sucks. You know, whenever really ever take a rally in mix. So what I was explaining about mix it's essentially, you know, you're, you're using that for rain reinforcements on a fort and also as a rally lead. And the only time really you ever really need to consider like changing that out is if like, let's say if I know the guy's sending cap, which by the way, how, how do you know? You just check and see if their members are stupid enough not to send an infantry unit. <laughs> because you can tell if they're walking faster or slower. There's a way to tell, and if you don't know, okay, the main thing is check the timer. Because you can actually compare the time and see how quickly they're marching, and if they look like they're marching faster, they could be cavalry. Okay, it's an easy way to kind of get an eyeball guess of what they're sending. And if you know, well, in advance, you know, that rally's launching and you can guess he's sending cavalry, then guess what? You can actually take your troops out in the last minute, you know, and, you know, usually I wait till like about a minute and... Yeah, that's about a minute left, right, on the timer for their rally to launch and have everyone pull out and send range. And if I'm wrong, I'll, put, I'll have them do a split. So I'll do range, majority range, five, and then five, meaning that, you know, I'll get majority range and then majority end. And that covers me in case I accidentally find myself that, oh, it wasn't cap, but I have infantry so we can block range. Now, if it turns out it's inf, well, then I back the hell up because I'm not going to hit imp on imp nor am I going to do range on it, right? You always, always, always want to avoid that if you can. Um, and again, you know, when you're talking your gear, 
Um, again, you always swap to whatever your you know whatever your one type set is that you're defending it. Now you know between like I was explaining earlier with the wedges and phalanxes, that stuff stays pretty much the same. You always want to sit and you know if if you know Cav is coming, you always send it in. You know, or like for example, if you know Cav is coming at you, you sit in range phalanx. If somebody's coming with at you with imp, you sit in Cav phalanx. That part of it doesn't change. The only time I've ever noticed anyone use wedges would be like that one exception where, you know, if if you want to get range up a little closer, instead of having those buffers, I've seen people use like an imp wedge for that reason. I don't use wedges that often, uh, and I really choose not to because it's always a little wonky for me. I'm not a big fan of it, um, at least that's from my experience. Uh, it is always very critical to know, you know, in, in terms of like Wonder Wars, you want to know who has what fort boosts because 25% in the attack bonuses are huge. Uh, so almost everybody should target the fort attack boosts first and then try to hold base if you can because those are the only three that really, or four, I should say, that are really valuable. Okay, and Baron, Baron, usually you're, you're just trying to target one guy, so if you know he sends cab every single time, then you just wait until he sends cab, and then you send range. And then you speed that thing up with, you know, carpets, which if you don't want to know what carpets are, they're bought in the Wonder Mall, but basically you carpet that thing, and then you hope that he takes it, and you wham, you smack him, and you get, you know, you get a nice one on one mono -y mono kind of hit, and that's where you get those really juicy kills at. And that's really what you want to do. Uh, overall, uh, with that in mind, um, you know, I hope that that's somewhat insightful for you. You can test some of this stuff on Dark Nests. You know, if you want to practice, I really recommend doing that during Dragon Arena. If you don't know, if you're not confident as a Rally Lead, Dragon Arena is the one time where you can quite literally just try something. If you're afraid that it doesn't work, well, guess what? Dragon Arena, you don't lose any troops, so you can test rallies on players. You can test rallies on forts. You can test a lot of that stuff. And so I really do highly recommend checking that yeah, stuff out and right. testing yourself yeah, to like see it. really what works and what doesn't go. work. Um, ultimately, uh, that is what you guys need to do in order to be able to uh, rally attack. I hope that this was somewhat insightful. Make sure to like, subscribe, you know, and if you want to support the channel, become a member. Uh, we've got emotes. And, uh, you know, needless to say, I've got streams coming out on the weekend uh, around 3 p.m. Um, again, if you guys want to save some money, uh, you can send me your Huawei ID to my line, which is Dakota Fisherman, and I can hook you up and get you like 50% on your savings. You got to spend more than $200 a month on the game, but with Huawei App Gallery, you can save some money. I've got a link in the description if you want to watch a video tutorial on how to do that. Uh, but ultimately, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.